joining me. I appreciate your time and your interest in the subject, and I want to talk to you today about nitrogen. It doesn't matter what season you're headed into because our orchids are always doing something all year round. When you have a diverse collection, you may have some that are winter resters and you have some that are starting their new growth during the winter. So the subject pretty much pertains to everybody and I'm also going to be including organic or inorganic growing. So just because I grow mainly in inorganic media, I am not coming from the approach of inorganic growing. I hope that this will be of interest. I'm going to be talking about the different forms of nitrogen and how much nitrogen do orchids need. Maybe clear up some myths, but that is not my main intention, but based on what I'm going to say, it could pose some questions. So feel free, please, to direct all and any questions into the comments. The main aim of this video is to hopefully clarify some of the information that is out there. And I understand that there are different approaches and thoughts about the subject of nitrogen in general. And I'm not here to suggest changing anything that you may be doing and doing successfully. I want to break down the subject of nitrogen for anyone who is confused with what information is out there. So pretty much I'm consolidating some basic information into a single video. I hope you find it interesting. So let's start with the forms of nitrogen and get a basic idea of what is going on when we speak of nitrogen, because that is what we see on labels. If we were to look at the composition of the fertilizer we are about to buy or the one that we are using, when you look at the fertilizer labels, you will see that the percentages of nitrate nitrogen ammoniacal nitrogen and in some cases urea nitrogen are listed. Once again I have some charts, take advantage of them and screenshot them if you would like to use them as a quick reference. It's a summary of what the different forms of nitrogen have when it comes to being absorbed by the roots of our orchids. Now even though the chart has a certain format I'm going to start with the elephant in the room first and that is the subject of urea nitrogen. So many times we hear that the urea nitrogen form cannot be absorbed by our orchids and based on the chart it confirms that this form of nitrogen is easily flushed through the pot and lost if not first converted to the ammonium form by microorganisms in the root zone and subsequently it won't be absorbed by the roots. The key is this, if not converted to the ammonium form by the microorganisms in the root zone. You see urea nitrogen has to undergo a conversion for it to be absorbed by the roots the urea form has to change. So it is true that urea nitrogen in its urea form is not absorbed by the roots, but as it undergoes a chemical change while in the media, because enzymes in the media convert the urea nitrogen to ammonia nitrogen, it can then be absorbed by our orchids. So once the urea is in the form of ammonia nitrogen, the ammonia nitrogen reacts with wet media to form ammonium nitrogen, and then through the action of the microorganisms in the media, the ammonium nitrogen is converted to nitrate nitrogen, which is immediately available for absorption by the roots. If that sounded like mumbo jumbo, the most important conclusion to be drawn out of this is the following. If you are growing in organic media and your orchid is potted, then having some urea nitrogen in your fertilizer will allow your orchids to absorb it because it has time to undergo the change to a form of nitrogen your orchids can absorb. If you grow your orchids mainly on mounts, the urea nitrogen will not have time to convert to an absorbable form of nitrogen and will just flush off the mount without any effect at all. Also, if you are growing in inorganic media, same thing. The urea form of nitrogen will have no impact at all when it comes to fertilizing because inorganic media doesn't favor the microorganisms that are necessary to convert urea nitrogen to an ammonia nitrogen for the roots to absorb that nitrogen. And to make it even more simple to understand, organic media, urea nitrogen will be absorbed eventually. We'll get to the eventually part inorganic media won't. But most fertilizers will have the nitrogen nitrate and ammonium nitrate as their main source of nitrogen. So that is what is most important no matter what media you are growing in. 
Here comes the eventually part. I am going to circle back to the time it may take for urea nitrogen to convert to a usable ammonium nitrogen, just briefly, because the information out there is also contradictory and I want to touch on that. The thing is, there are many opinions as to how long it takes to convert urea to ammonium. Some estimates say it takes a year and others will say it's just a matter of hours or days. In general, our fertilizers of the modern age, in adverted commas, modern age, are put together in such a way that urea can be converted to ammonium within 24 hours, maximum 40 hours. Usually, organic media in a pot will stay wet for that period of time, so the urea will have time to convert and be absorbed by the roots. But that debate can continue indefinitely. However, I would like to point out that if the two forms of nitrogen are in the fertilizer and they are immediately available for uptake, then the 24 hours to 40 hours conversion time frame of the urea is pretty much obsolete anyway, because by then the orchid will have absorbed what it needs from the nitrogen nitrate and the ammonium nitrogen. One could basically tell urea nitrogen, you're too late, pal. I'm done, I'm full. You see, that is because any excess of nitrogen, no matter the form, will be flushed out while watering. The velamen takes what it needs immediately, sends it to the root, and the nitrogen distribution takes place within the orchid. 24 hours later, when the urea decides to become available, the orchid is already saying, nope, I've had what I need already. Think of it this way. You're in a restaurant, you've had a great meal, and it is as if the dessert trolley comes around a second time with another waiter who did not know that you already had dessert because his colleague had already visited your table with the trolley. And there was a lack of communication behind the scenes, so here comes the dessert trolley again, and you have had your fill. Which means he pretty much walks away, not needing to give you more dessert, the first waiter had already done his job and there's only so much dessert you can eat or maybe not. <laughs> if you're like me, I will take advantage of a communication error in back of house and I'll have myself a second helping of dessert. But, that, <laughs> but that's just to describe what urea actually is. It will get absorbed eventually, but by that time your orchid has already absorbed plenty of nitrogen and any excess would be flushed out anyway. And I hope that all makes sense. Because when we talk about flushing out any excess, let's talk about how much nitrogen do our orchids need. There's no general amount that will work across an entire collection if the collection is diverse. I will link a nitrogen calculator in the description because many times we hear that growers are fertilizing at a measure of ppm based on nitrogen only. Now the results of growers that do that are proof of success that this way of dosing a fertilizer solution is not incorrect. Personally, in the first years of this collection, I have used my nitrogen base as my ppm and there was a time where I used to fertilize at 100 parts per million of nitrogen. The rest in the fertilizer then just being an add-on, but, big but. <laughs> Now I go with a general PPM, not singling out the nitrogen component to make my solution. And the reason being, the PPM shoots up to a quantity that is far too much for what I want to fertilize my orchids with. And this has also got a lot to do with my climate and my setup. So keep that in mind when you hear about using your nitrogen as the baseline for how high your parts per million of nitrogen will be when you fertilize. Again, I'm not saying there's anything wrong with that. So let's go back to why I'm not doing this anymore, because it has a lot to do with my climate and my setup. First of all, I have no humidity that would buffer against such high levels of PPM in the pot. The evaporation is faster than the absorption and salt buildup would be a massive factor if I use the nitrogen PPM to fertilize my orchids. So there's a balance that needs to be considered when fertilizing using the nitrogen as the baseline for your parts per million. You need perfect airflow to humidity ratio. If the fertilizer solution is high, the pot and the mounts need to stay wet long enough for the nutrients to be absorbed or salt buildup will happen quickly and that in turn will be detrimental to the health of the roots and of course subsequent long-term health of the orchid. Now 
I hear you say, but you are growing in Lekka and self-watering. Surely that is a wet enough environment for the roots to absorb higher PPM amounts. And I would have thought so as well. But during the growing season, the evaporation is fast while the wicking takes place and without humidity to buffer against the dryness of the surface of the pots, the salt will be visible within days. When I tried fertilizing by using the nitrogen PPM as my baseline, no amount of flushing could counteract the salt buildup in my pots and on the surface. If my environment were to provide a humidity of 75% at a minimum, then I would probably dose higher. Under my circumstances though, I prefer to be conservative and trust that the fertilizer I am using will do its job. So far, I have not seen my orchids have any nitrogen deficiencies for lack of quantity. The only time I can see it happening is when I cannot fertilize as I would like because my winter temperatures force me to tiptoe around the fertilizer subject in general. A nitrogen deficiency can be corrected when the temperatures warm up. Salt buildup during the winter in my conditions cannot be corrected and root burn definitely not either. So, <laughs> sorry about that, but that was a tangent I needed to put out there to get to answering the question, how much nitrogen do our orchids need? Answer is, how much time have you got? If you want to be pedantic and do the right thing by every single orchid in your collection on an individual basis, then you need to take several factors into consideration. First of all, how big is your orchid? Not just height in structures, but how many structures? For example, one could consider a Guarianthus an XXL size orchid, but then you have the opposite side of the spectrum and you have yourself an Alvarenguensis, which is super small. Another thing to consider, is it in active growth? I.e. is it growing new roots? Is it growing new growths? Is it growing all of it at the same time? Or you have to consider, is it resting? The classic resting dendrobiums of phylums and the anosmums as such. Another factor to consider, does it grow fast once it gets growing, like a catacetinae would? Or does it take 12 months to grow a single growth, for example, like an iricolor would? You see, with these considerations in mind, the nitrogen dosage on an individual basis becomes quite the workload. Now, it can be done, and hats off to everyone who does this on an orchid-to-orchid -orchid basis. Personally, <laughs> I do not have time for that. And for that reason, I keep it structured to four different categories, one of which is the size of the orchid. Is it XXL or is it extra small? Is the orchid in active growth? Is it resting or is it a slow grower? And I've broken down my fertilizing concentration to parts per million based on those points I've just mentioned. So a small orchid gets 100 parts per million of total fertilizer and I am not singling nitrogen out. I am not using 100 parts per million of nitrogen as my baseline. I'm talking the whole fertilizer doses amounts to 100 parts per million. So my medium-sized orchids get 160. That includes slow growers, for example, like the Iricolor. And then the large ones, even the extra large ones, are 300 parts per million, also including my fast growers. Anything that is resting, dormant, gets, of course, zero parts per million, no fertilizer at all. That is my personal structure to avoid any excess salt buildup, to keep things simple for me in my head. And if I have to fill a pot two times per week because of how busy the orchid is absorbing the reservoir, then those values would automatically double. So having considered all of that, let's just compare the two nitrogens that our orchids can absorb immediately. A fertilizer will usually have a higher percentage of nitrate nitrogen than an ammoniacal nitrogen. Nitrate nitrogen promotes sturdier growth, while ammoniacal nitrogen tends to produce lush, soft growth more susceptible to disease. So when you check your fertilizer, see that your nitrate nitrogen and ammoniacal nitrogen is at a 3 to 1 ratio preferably. You want strong and sturdy growths. You don't want anything that becomes soft and more susceptible to disease. And nitrate nitrogen will be the component that promotes sturdier growths. And I'm also only briefly going to 
touch up on the quality of water when it comes to fertilizing, watering our orchids, because that is somewhat relevant when you buy your fertilizer in some cases. But I'll go more into detail on that for the orchid lingo series when I touch upon water. But just briefly, if you have soft water, your fertilizer of choice should be one that is primarily nitrate nitrogen. That includes rainwater, or reverse osmosis water. It is best to avoid fertilizers with an acidic reaction like those containing 25% of the ammoniacal nitrogen form because it can cause radical drops of the pH around the roots. The pH, once again, is super important for the roots to even take up any kind of nitrogen and if the pH is too low, and in my example drops below my happy safe pH of 5.8, then no matter what you do, the nitrogen will not be absorbed. So opt for a fertilizer with less than a quarter of the nitrogen in ammoniacal form. On the other hand, if you have hard water with high alkalinity and high TDS, as would be in my case, if I were to take my water out of the mains, your best bet for fertilizer is one that will cause an acidic reaction around the roots so that the natural occurring calcium and other nutrients are more available to the orchid. Ammoniacal nitrogen will reduce the pH around the roots. And for that kind of water, you need to look for a fertilizer with up to half the nitrogen in the ammoniacal form so that you can drop the pH of the municipal hard water. Usually, if you have the right kind of fertilizer, it will do the job automatically. Alternatively, and sometimes necessary, a pH down will be required to bring the pH to a range where the roots can actually absorb all the nutrients in the solution, not just the nitrogen. And that is why I wanted to briefly touch up on the water subject because the nitrogen distinction will be based on the kind of water you have, which is the reason that certain fertilizer brands will ask you to specify what kind of water you are using. The nitrogen percentages change based on pure water, RO water, distilled water, rainwater, or on the other side of the spectrum, hard water. So in case you are wondering what does it matter which water I'm using, if you are ordering your fertilizer from a manufacturer that wants to know when you placed your order, it is because of the two different nitrogen percentages. They will vary based on your water quality. Briefly, in my video on the four most common deficiencies that we will see in our orchids, I touched upon nitrogen deficiency because it can happen that our pH meter might be off, it's not calibrated properly, but our orchids are always telling us something and what is going on. So if you're seeing yellowing on older leaves with yellowing between the veins or edges, it's like the chlorosis, that is a sign that your orchid is undergoing a nitrogen deficiency. In very severe cases, the deficiency will start to show in cell collapse if the problem isn't corrected sooner. And that would just result in a black line around the edge of the leaf, which is not to be confused with a calcium deficiency, because usually it would be on older structures if you see a nitrogen deficiency. You might also get an orchid new into your collection. You've just ordered it from the nursery and the poor thing hasn't even had time to adapt. But meanwhile, it's growing a new growth and it's drawing reserves of nitrogen from older growths. That is the example I am showing in this image is exactly what I got when I received an orchid from a nursery. It had that black line around the edge. The orchid hasn't even had time to be fertilized properly and boom, it landed in my collection. So correcting that deficiency would be very advisable to fertilize with a nitrate-based fertilizer because once again, nitrate nitrogen is immediately absorbed by the orchid. And check your pH. Organic media can be breaking down and what you think the pH of your water is when you put it into your pot, if the media has started to break down, then the pH is going to be much lower and the orchid will not be absorbing the nitrogen as efficiently as you think it should be doing based on your pH meter and based on organic media breaking down. 
I always say for organic media, 6.7 or 6.8 is a great pH because that is when nitrogen is readily available. And in the event that the media is breaking down and there is no time for repotting just yet, even if it slips to about 6.3 or 6.1, the orchid will still be able to absorb the nitrogen and it won't be locked out. Anyway, any deficiency with nitrogen is relatively quickly corrected, unless of course there was cell collapse and cell damage that won't be corrected. But any yellowing of the lines, etc., can be about a two week time frame, and the chlorophyll will start to green up again once the nitrogen issue has been addressed. So I'm hoping that some of the things I've said today didn't start to cause a brain scratch. That was not my intention. I just wanted to put some simple basic information out there and also explain the reasons for nitrogen PPM as a baseline measure for fertilizing orchids, whether it's a good thing or a bad thing. Personally, once again, I don't think it's a bad thing. Every environment needs to judge that for themselves. So again, humidity and airflow, if there is not an equal balance, the PPM using the nitrogen fertilizer as a baseline will cause issues and salt accumulation in the pot. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions. I am very happy to elaborate on this subject further. I wanted to keep it a little bit concise in the hopes that any long articles out there on the interwebs started to cause a little bit of confusion. I just want this video to break it down and keep it as simple as possible. And I really hope I achieved that. Your time watching or listening is very, very much appreciated. Thank you so, so much. Have yourselves a beautiful, beautiful day on one condition though, that you do stay safe. Take care. Bye.